What's good, everybody? In today's video, I'm going to tell you guys why. In 2023, the lightweight division will come to a point that we will see who's the best fighter at lightweight. See you guys in a minute. Yeah, welcome to the Rebuttal Entertainment. Hit the like button and hit the subscribe button. Tell a friend, tell a friend, share the video. You know, we're here to let you guys know what's going on in boxing. We speak facts on this channel, and today we're going to speak some facts about the lightweight division. Well, me personally, I think the lightweight division in 2023 should tell all of who the bet light lightweight in boxing we got a lot of people coming up we got a lot of people coming up we still got the old school um fighters in there trying to hold on we got the new school fighters coming up like frank martin and stuff like that man but who will prevail who will prevail man but first we got to see the fights we got to see the fight we got a lot of people in the division but ain't none of them fighting each other there's none of them fighting each other and it's a shame man because the division if you really think about it, even if you want to talk about the old school fighters that's in there the lightweight division is loaded it's loaded you know we got jojo diaz the journeyman you know i mean he's a journeyman me even though he's young he'll fight anybody he'll fight anybody and he'll get anybody a tough task he'll get anybody out there a tough fight you know what i mean we got killer cam Bosa. you know what i mean he's a young up and coming you know what i mean got the heart of a line he just ain't got the skills and we all know skill pay the bills. He can beat some of these guys on a good day. Or let me maybe should I say one of these fighters have an off day? Oh, Ken Bosa can do it. He, you know, he got a little bit of skills. He got a little bit of skills, so he can do it, man. So there's a lot of people up there. But are they gonna get the chance? Can Bosa had his chance? Devin Haney beat him, then they're gonna fight again. Devin Haney probably beat him again. But you never know in Australia. The judges, <laughs> you never know. If you be close. Them belts might be going back to Australia, man. You know, and then we got um Pitbull. A lot of people is on Isaac Cruz because um him and Javante Davis fight. Pitbull did what he had to do. Tank hurt his hand in the sixth round. I ain't throwing but one pump, one hand the rest of the fight. I ain't throwing but one hand the rest of the fight, man. So, you know, I think they really want to get back on that fight. I know it's coach do. I know Coach Calvin won't get back on that fight to show everybody that Pitbull is not on um, Tank's level. Will we see it? Mm, we might. Do you want to see it? Mm, <laughs> you might. <laughs> I mean, it is what it is. It's a catch-22. Do you want to see it? Do you don't want to see it? Because Pitbull comes in throwing hangmakers and hooks and all kinds of stuff. You know, him and Tank almost the same height. So, you know, it'll be it'll, it'll be a good fight. It'll be a real good fight. Excuse me. It'll be a real good fight, man. And um, we'll see. We'll see. I, I just don't think Pitbull got a chance if they fight again. I think Tanks take him out. I think Tanks take him out. He always seen how he fight. You know, Tank will make the adjustment, take him out, man. So I don't know. I don't know. Then we got the old journeyman. Then we got the old journeyman, Richard Comey. Richard Comey still got that pop. He still got that pop, you know what I mean? Martinez, as Martinez, the guy that um, Frank Martin just fought. Richard Comey put him to sleep sleep, you know? So Richard Comey still in there, still in there. What are we going to see? Do we want to count Shakur in this or we just want to leave Shakur at 130? You know what I mean? But I'm going to bring Shakur up. So I'm going to put him part of the 135-pound division, even though he's not in the 135-pound division. He's 130-pound um, lightweight fighter right now. So... But Shakur Stevenson can fight. There's no disagreement about that. That young guy can fight. But we don't know how good these young guys is until they fight the best. They got to fight the best at their weight class to determine um, who's the best in their division. I just can't give people accolades for something they haven't done. You know, people get on me all the time. But you too hard on these guys. Lou, you too hard on these guys. You know what I mean? They young. They, oh, you can't keep using young and age as an excuse. 
You just can't use it as an excuse no more. Once you become a professional fighter and you don't got these uh, rounds in, a lot of fights, all these goals and the stuff you done achieved, they only say you're young on the catch 22. You know what I mean? Let me say, if they go do something real good, they're going to say, oh, he did this as a young fighter at this age and that age. But if they lose, they're going to be like, oh, he's young, man. He can learn from his mistakes and he can um come back a better fighter. See, that's how they use the word young. I don't use it. I don't use it, and I'm never going to use it. I mean, if you're the boxer, you've been boxing, you got all five, ten professional fights, that stuff is wiped out the window to me. You know what I mean? Because boxing is boxing. Man on man, mono on mono. You know what I mean? Skill pay the bills. So you can't use that as an division. But we're, we're going to watch out a little bit for Richard Comey, man. See if something, he can get back on track. Because <laughs> we learned some footwork and some defense and some head movement. He got a lot to do, but he'll be okay. But he still got that pop. One thing never leaves is that daggone power. That power never leaves, man. It never leaves you. And then we got Ryan Garcia. Ryan Garcia. You know, Ryan Garcia is the most overestimated. Un- overestimated. I think he's as, um, overhyped a little bit. But we want to say he needs a little bit more time. He needs a little bit more time because of his injuries, quote, unquote, he said he had, but mental health he said he had. You know what I mean? Did he overachieve or underachieve already? We don't know because he only fought one guy. <coughs> and we're going to see when he come and fight Javier Fentuna, one of the most dirtiest fighters in boxing. He head busts you, he elbows, knees. He, he hits you wherever he's going to hit you at, and he keep going. So this fight should show – um uh ryan garcia's manhood what he's about and what um him and joe goose have been working on for the last two three months man i truly believe ryan garcia can be one of the best fighters in boxing if he keep his head on straight stay out of the media for a little bit and just work on his craft he talked too much he talked too much you know what i mean everything he got he got something to say about everybody everything his old friend canelo alway got something to say about him his own trainer his own manager he always using um tank name for um clout clout bait you know what i mean cap when he say t- tank davis name because he want people once you say tank name you know the, the attention going to draw to you now, a lot of other fighters do that stuff man but can he fight he can fight he you know like i just said about richard comey he got one of the best left hands in boxing. <laughs> that power. He got that power, that equalizer. And it's quick and fast. You know, he just got a lot of stuff to work on. He got to work on his defense, too, like homemade. He got to work on his jab, his footwork, his distance. You know what I mean? Just because he's tall, figure he's big, and can walk people down. He can't do it with them punches. The punch is going to put him back, put him on his feet. You know I mean, he got to learn how to fight on his back foot. You know what I mean? Got to learn how to pivot, get out of there. Hopefully, you know, Joe Goosen is teaching them all these tricks of the trade so he can become a better fighter. Ryan Garcia will be a good fighter. He will be a good fighter out there. You know, but um, time will tell. So I'm just breaking down how many people are in this lightweight division. You know what I mean? So we got Frank Martin, the new guy, the new guy. Everybody says he's, you know, he's going to be real good in the division. You know, you know me. I'm old school. You got you to show me. You know? Beating Martinez is not going to um, tell me that you're one of the best out there. You know what I mean? The eye test, don't, I don't have no eyes. You, you got to do better than that. You know what I mean? You got to get in there and fight quality opponents, better opponents, to show me what you can do. Do it um, If you want to go by the eye test, do he, do he look the position? Yeah, he look like he can you know, get in there and go. But that don't mean nothing. That don't mean nothing. Because I remember, like I said, back in the days when Turner Crawford first came in, they asked him about the eye test. He said, the eye test don't mean to me, mean nothing to me, when they were trying to compare um, Earl Spence with Keith Thurman. When Turner Crawford got interviewed on ESPN, they said, nah, Mac Cameron, where the eye test tells me Earl Spence is. I'm like, nah, Turner Crawford, where your eyes can prove you wrong. And that's one thing I agree with Turner Crawford. That's one thing I agree with Turner Crawford. The eyes can prove you wrong. You never know. You know, I mean, you can have the eye test, but then when you get in, when these guys get in there, well, people who had the same knowledge, the same ability as them, then we see more than with the eye test. You got to have the heart test. You ever heard of the heart test? Yes, that's what we need to see, the heart test. You know what I mean? What can they do, do then? What can they do then? So 
Frank Martin, uh, we're still going to put a question mark behind, um, behind him because we really don't know. You know. So the talk is that he's going to fight Chris Colbert. Chris Colbert. Chris, don't nobody want to see it, but hey, if you want to see it, hey, fine with me. Who want to see Chris Colbert? The heart test. I just got finished talking about the heart test. Chris Colbert don't have the heart. He don't have the heart, man. I, I don't know what else to say. Maybe he'll have the heart one day. You know, he's still young. He can prove us wrong that he has the heart. But right now, I just don't think he's mentally into um, fighting right now. You know, even though Earl called him out, say, I talked to your manager, we're going to make this fight happen. I don't think he's ready. He got beat down and quit. The dude got beat down and quit. So we need to get Chris Colbert a little bit more time, man. That, that's just my opinion. I think we need to get him a little bit more time, um, work on some more of his craft and see what's going on, man. Because um, other than that, it's something I don't want to see. I don't want to see Chris Colbert and uh, Frank Martin. If Frank Martin going to fight somebody, let it be JoJo Diaz. Let it be um, Roley. Roley ain't got no fights. Somebody I know that ain't going to move around, ain't going to um, gunshot. Somebody going to sit in there and fight. with. Let it be Roley. Let it be Richard Comey. Put him in there with somebody who's going to give him some competition. Somebody going to make him fight. Make them make decisions, last-minute decisions. You know, we're putting them in there with Chris Colbert? Come on, man. Chris Colbert needs, like, two more tune-ups now before he even get in the ring with any elite fighter. Any elite fighter. So that's my, my take on Frank Martin. And speaking of Roley, let's talk about Roley. See, this 135. Man, they got so but they, they got so many fighters in there. I don't know, like, seven already. You know, Roley only lost with Javante Davis. He looked pretty good. Look pretty good, even though we know he has no kind of ability. He, you know, but he got that equalizer. You know what I mean? But if he's smart, he'll have somebody else to come in with bullet and to teach him the techniques of boxing. You know what I mean? The technique, the really how to throw a jab and the movement and the move his head. And I think he can always outpower people, man. You know, knock people out. Things got to change with Rolly. He's just gonna be another gatekeeper too with power. No, it's Tank showed how to beat the gatekeeper with power. He's not smart in the ring. He's not smart in the ring, but would you want to see Roley fight Frank Martin? Yes, I would love to see that fight. I would love to see Roley fight Frank Martin. You know what I mean? That would be a good fight, a hell of a fight. And for some reason, I just don't know why Richard Comey is still in my brain, man. I would love to see Roley fight Richard Comey. You know, Richard Comey just lost to the Matrix. The Matrix, Lomachenko, we're going to talk about him next. But, yeah, so Roley, Frank Martin, you know, let it make, let it happen. When Roley come over his 90-day suspension, I think it should be over by now. I think him and Tank, when they fought, what, two months ago? Well, whatever it is. So Roley be back in action. One thing about the lightweight division, we can mm, this way, that way, that way, that way. Whatever way we go, we can make a good fight. Whatever ever way we go, we can make a good fight, man. You know what I mean? We got Killer Cam up there. Killer Cam, Cabosa. You know what I mean? Under Overachiever. Quartier Fimo. This my just this my Quartier Fimo on a bad day. Quartier Fimo had all kinds of problems. But do um, Cabosa got skills? He got skills. You know what I mean? Can he hang with some of these fighters? He can hang with some of the um, C and B class. But I don't think he can hang with none of the elite fights, none of the A class fights. No, he can't. You know, you got to do more than be a counter puncher, man, with a little bit of um, speed, man. You got to have, you got you to have some kind of pop, some kind of other movement, some kind of something. Composer just stood there and let Devin Haney do whatever he wanted to do. You know what I mean? But Devin did it because he's more skillful than him. So Composer's going to be all right, but he's just there. He's another, you can put him in the JoJo Diaz category. So I'm just going to break it all down to you the way I think they're going to be, the way I think they is. He's going to be all right. So let's go next. Vasil Lomachenko, to me, the second best fighter at the lightweight division. It's just my opinion. You know what I mean? The second best fighter in the lightweight division. You know, he had shoulder surgery, came back, beat, what, Nakatani. And I've got the Richard Comey, stopped, stopped both of them. You know what I mean? Maybe his shoulder was bad when he fought um, Teofimo Lopez. Maybe he did have bad, bad shoulder surgery or something like that. 
But Loma, still at the age he's at, had the skills to beat any fighter out there. Can he beat them all? Uh, we don't know. Uh, we don't know. But I tell you what, he's going to get out there and try his best. <laughs> and his best can be good enough in any single day. If the best Loma Chinko show up, it's going to be hard to beat him. If the best Loma Chinko shows up, it will be hard to beat him. You know what I mean? Especially from the B class fighters, you know what I mean? But we'll see. Hopefully, he'll be back in October and we'll see what the Matrix working with. We'll see if he lo lost anything being at war and all this stuff, man. But I think he's going to be a force in the lightweight division for maybe another two years and then he's done. He's done after that. But no, he'll give any of these good fighters out here um, good quality. He'll give them all a good fight, man. And the next time he comes up, I don't want him fighting no D. He need to fight people of his competition. Like he just fought Comey. Let's move him up. Who next? Who next? He said he want the champion. But everybody has a fight. So they got to find somebody good for Lomachenko to fight. Or maybe he just want to get the rust off. We'll see. We'll see what Top Wagner Bob and them do. You know, that's Bob's stepson. So Bob will take care of Lomachenko, man. He'll take care of Loma. <laughs> so now let's talk about the guy who's in between weight class. Shakur Stevens. You know, the brash eye, the dimples, the distance guy, the jab. You know what I mean? The jab. Of course, Steven is one of the best fighters in boxing. You know, that they said. He, he trying to um, be um, undisputed at 30, but I don't think it's going to happen because ain't nobody going to make the fight. So he need to move up to 135 with the big boys. Can he handle them? Yeah, he can handle all of them. You know what I mean? He's one of the young, talented fighters in boxing. No, only thing my gripe about Shakur Stevenson is the same gripe I had with Devin Haney, but I'm gonna say it in a minute. And Ryan Garcia said it, and I made a video about it three weeks, three months ago, two, two or three months ago. Their killer instincts. Being in Boston, you gotta have a killer instinct. Shakur Stevenson don't have one. You know what I mean? I think he really could have took Valdez out of there, but he didn't try. He didn't try. His other fight, he could have took somebody up out of his. When you get these guys hurt and you beating them like you beating these guys. Try to knock them out. Try, you got to put the killer instinct in. Put the nail in the coffin, man. You know what I mean? But then, I'm like, then he might get clipped. It's boxing. It's boxing. If he know what he's doing, he's not going to get clipped, man. You t when you get these guys hurt and stumbling, wobbling, they look defeated, you got to have that killer instinct and try to take these guys out. Did you call Stevenson got the killer instinct? I don't think so. Can he develop it? Uh, maybe. Maybe he just happy. Doing what he's doing, they're beating you to death for 12 rounds and moving on, you know. Because the one thing we know for sure out of his mouth, he don't like being hit, and he do a lot of talking lately, a lot of smart little snippets that he's been saying on the radio and these interviews about everybody, you know, tank and all these guys stuff. But we know one thing for sure that dude don't like being hit. If you hit him, he's gonna be on his back feet. And I'm not I'm not um hating, I'm just telling you and observe what I see and what he said himself. And it showed when he fought. Um, I forgot the guy's name when he fought him. I mean, he was on his back feet once he got hit. But is he gonna have he gonna have to be a little bit better? A little bit better when he fight these um other people in the same, like I said, the same level as him. You know what I mean? He's gonna have to change it. He gonna have to get that killer instinct, you know what I mean? When he fight the people like um Herring and all them people who are a marine, ninety thousand years old, who ain't got no pop, ain't gonna put him on his back foot, you know what I mean? Gonna go at him and know how to get out of that distance and that jab and all that stuff, you know what I mean? We're gonna see what he made of. We're gonna see what he made of, but until these guys fight each other, we won't know. Until they fight each other, we won't know. So next on the list, Devin, the Dream Haney, the undisputed champion at um, lightweight division. You know what I mean? Did what he had to do, went over Australia, beat um, uh, George Kambosa convincingly, convincingly, just on the jab alone, just on the jab. You know what I mean? He beat him just on the jab. But is he going to be able to beat the rest of these fighters doing just jabbing. Just jabbing. Pop, 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 move. Pop, 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 move. Hold, hold, hold. Pop, pop, move. Is he going to be able to beat the elite fighters at 135 just jabbing? 
Some people say he's the best fighter. <laughs> he's the, he the next Floyd Mayweather. I don't see it. Pretty Boy Floyd was the baddest man on the planet. Pretty Boy Floyd was the baddest man on the planet. I can care what nobody else says. He had everything. Speed, speed, power, range generalship, movement, defense, offense, count on you. Pretty Boy Floyd was the best. Devin Haney ain't nothing like that. Nothing like that. Devin moves around the ring like it ain't a pretty boy Floyd ain't never do that stuff. So stop comparing him with pretty boy Floyd. He's not pretty boy Floyd, man. You know what I mean? He's Devin Haney. And I want to know, is that going to get him through these tough fights when he fight the Tank Davis, the Chapo Stevenson, the Lomachenko? Is that is the way Devin Haney fights going to help him get through these fights? It might. You never know. But I think he got to create something else besides his jab. He has no power, so ain't nobody going to be scared of his pop. He got the speed. He got the defense. He got the quickness. You know what I mean? He got the movement. But will that be enough for people who can counter that? Will it be enough? You know, they say we don't give him enough credit because he's undisputed. Why would I? Why would you? Why would you? Oh, he went into a foreign country, 23 years old, you know, with a, you know, and did this and brought back the belt. Man, stop using age as an excuse. I just said that earlier in this video. You cannot keep using age as an excuse. He did what he had to do. He's a professional boxer. He's a professional boxer. So he did what he had to do to win. And he did it, and he did it brilliantly. He did it good. But is that going to be enough? Huh? We'll see. We'll see. And last but not least, Javante Tank Davis. You know, people get on Tank for not fighting the bigger, you know, quality, the best fighters um, at 135. But think about it. Who is fighting? These, who fighting the best fighters at 135? Name them. Who? Who Devin Haney done for? A class fighter. Who's your, um? Who the rest of them done for? They always saying Tank ain't fought nobody. Well, ain't nobody at 35 fought nobody but Lomachenko. Lomachenko is the only guy at 135 that fought quality competition. Oh, he lost. He lost. He, yes, he lost, but he fighting quality competition. You know what I mean? And one thing I can say about Tank, Tank did dare to be great. He went up to 140 to fought to fight uh, Mario Barrios, who's the WBA um, regular, he was the WBA regular champion. Tank took the belt. He dared to be great. He fighting 130, 135. He went up to 140. At least he dared to be great. Then I'm gonna say Mario Boyle. How many of these guys do you think could be Mario Boyle? Mario Boyle is a good fighter. He is a good fighter. Dare to be great. Dare to be great. Tank ain't fought nobody. <laughs> Shakur Stevenson haven't fought nobody. Devin Haney haven't fought nobody. Ain't none of these dudes fought nobody because they hasn't, haven't fought each other. They ain't fought nobody, you know? But you know what? He's a cash cow. He's the face of boxing out the Canelo Alvarez. Go look at my video. That'll tell you why he is. I'm not going to go back and forth with you on it because he is. So can he fight? Tank can do every single thing in boxing. He just starts slow. If, if Javante Tank Davis started fast from the first round on, his fight probably be quicker than what there is now. But, you know, he like thinking. He'll hit thinker in the ring, man. He got the speed. He got the power. We got the movement. He got the offense. He got the defense. <laughs> in football, we'll say he got the special teams. He got it all. All in one package. You know? But do he put all that stuff together in certain his fights? No, he don't put it all together because he feel he can knock out. Like Leon Santa Cruz, he ain't used none of his talent. He just put his high guards up and went out and knocked Leon Santa Cruz down. Mario Barrios, after he felt that power, he said, okay, well, I can take this. Let me go knock him out. You know what I mean? When he fight Devin Haney, it's going to be speed, technician versus everything. You know, and the key to that fight is going to be tank right hand coming over Devin Jab. You know what I mean? When he fight Shakur Stevenson, you know, distance. Shakur keep the distance real good. Nice little jab. Nice little pop. Tank get up under that. He break the distance down. He made Shakur Stevenson uncomfortable. See, he can do it all. It depends on when he want to do it and how he want to do it, man. So the 135 division has a lot of talent. Next year, 2023, is either they're going to put up or they're going to shut up. Do we want to see Frank Martin fight Tank? Yeah. I don't think he's ready. Do you want to see him fight Devin Haney? Yeah. 
We'll see. Do you want to see him fight Lomachenko? Uh, I don't think he's ready for that either. You know, do you, it, it just all depends. Styles make fights. We all know this. We all know this. But time will tell, man. It's time for these guys to put up or shut up or just move on or move up. You always can move up to the next best weight vision in boxing in 2023, the 140 pound division, man. So hopefully we can get this stuff together. You know, put the, put all this talking to rest, like you know, Frank Martin, the bad, the next baddest man on the planet. But we'll see. I don't do too much talking about that. Get in the ring and swing. The rebuttal entertainment. If you're watching this video, subscribe to the channel, hit the like button, and we'll talk to you guys later. Peace and blessings, everybody.